This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Let's go. We are live at the Gate Bar and Bistro this morning where one of these fine dads in the room is going to win $5,000 this morning just for chucking some dart. Yeah, I know. We got them all out of bed. A lot of people are ready to go to work, so they're <laughs> yeah. uh, ready to run out the door. But hopefully they're walking out with $5,000. I mean, At least one of them is going to be. Not a bad payday. Oh, what a crack okay. the start. The weekend of Father's Day. we got a couple of footy players joining us this morning, in fact. Yeah, it's going to be huge, actually. Jeremy McGovern's going to come down. There's not many West Coast supporters think, here, I'd imagine. I think he would call it enemy territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's one. Ethan <laughs> Logue will join us via the phone. And Fremantle CEO um, Simon Garlic a bit later on, too. I'm sure he's pumped for the big game tomorrow night. This is Nathan, Nat and Sean. So there was an article online uh, just this morning where mm. which a lady put it up to see uh, about a receipt that she got back from a restaurant bill that she'd yes. paid. And it was to do with an industry service fee that was on there and she didn't understand what that was about. It was a Bavarian restaurant. It's over on the Sunshine Coast. Apparently on the Esco, about 30 of them. So Bavarian food, that's all the Germans. Yeah, it sounds like um, there'd be schnitzels galore. Yeah, pork, knuckle, sour oh, yes. you'd be right into that kind of stuff. Anyway, so she's paid the bill. And she was very confused because she felt like she was put on the spot. Yes. The bill had, as I said, an industry service fee for $5.25. No, that's not over the top. No, but, but still, what is it? <laughs> a lot of people online were saying that is basically it's an enforced you to tip. tip. Yeah, forcing right. You to tip. I think that's really interesting because, um, and we were talking about this with the bin chicken earlier on. In America, obviously, they get paid yes. really low wages, so that's like right. five, six, uh, seven dollars an hour. So that's why you tip. So there's a tipping culture there because yeah. otherwise they could not afford to eat. So yeah, absolutely. So but we don't have that. No, we, we have don't. a minimum wage that is um, uh, reasonable, and so I like I will tip for good service, but I'm not going to tip as a routine. Yeah, it's such an interesting thing. I think a lot of people have an opinion about yeah. this, but we were up in Exmouth just recently and um, the the restaurant's up there or any place you go up to eat there, because it's up north, you pay an absolute fortune. Yeah, right? that's so right. The prices are through the roof at, at um, anyway. The food was nice. The service was the service. Like It yep. wasn't uh, unbelievable and wasn't bad. It was certainly um, what you would expect. And when you got up to pay, um, they give you the, they put it all on a, um, an iPad and then they go, okay, that'll be, you know, 400 bucks or whatever. They thrust the iPad in front of you. Yes. And it says, what do you want to give, which is 5, 10 or 20% as a tip. They just put it in front of your face. Yes. And you've got no choice. You just put it on the spot. So the so, person so there's no you, There's no option for 0%. <laughs> The third Sorry. time we went to this joint, you, <laughs> Megan asked, Mrs. asked, what was that all yes. about? Do you have to pay? And they yeah. said, oh, no, absolutely not. But, but they're putting you right times. on the spot and, yeah. and you have to, yeah. So you tipped 5% every time. Of course though, I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we got 10%. You should see my bill. But oh. the power of putting somebody on the spot, you can get people to do a lot of things if you just put them on the spot about them. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you, would have been, you would get asked to do things all the time, obviously. Can you come and speak at this thing? Can you do that? And they... You know, if they put you on the spot and they're face to face, do you can you say no to them? No, you can't. I've been at a birthday party <laughs> once when they said, "Hey, do you mind just saying a few words?" And I was just standing in the crowd, half cast. <laughs> like, well, I don't even. You barely know the people. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're making stuff up. <laughs> just just talking about derbies of yeah, kids exactly. gone by. <laughs> I can talk about me, but I'm not sure about the bloke standing next. <laughs> yeah, whose who's party am I at? <laughs> How good is exploring our amazing backyard again? And ticking off all the Aussie big things. Pineapples, bananas, melons. Oh, that's making me hungry. Head to whatif.com and start planning your big Aussie adventure. What if it's Aussie for travel? Now, we are talking about being put on the spot at the moment. Yes, we certainly are because I reckon you can get people to say yes to just about anything if you put them on the spot in that moment. Um, so that's what we are. So let's go to Daniel in Caramar. Uh, hi, Daniel. Yeah, how you doing? Good, Dan. Okay, Dan. So you've been put on the spot. What did you agree to? Well, uh, quite a while ago, I agreed to uh, learning a new language and uh, getting stuck and living in a country for three years. Wait, wait <laughs> what? What happened? What happened? What happened, Dan? Well, I was uh, in Germany on a bit of a holiday, and uh, the ex-girlfriend decided she wanted to live there and uh, set me up with an interview. And uh, at the Marriott Hotel, and they asked me if I could learn German in three months. And I said and yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did, Germans, Germans. It's not, not an easy language. language there, Dan, are you yeah, still it, fluent? It wasn't too bad, but um, yeah, I picked up a hell of a lot more than I thought I would in three months. That's amazing. That is. Hey, Natalie, you told me a German word just yesterday. Was it yesterday? Mm, did I? 
Yeah, it sounded like something sausage. Oh, oh, yes, it was, it was, this is, so this is <laughs> an old man at a breakfast buffet pointed to one of the meats and said, Schweinerzunge, Schweinerzunge. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. He was saying it was pig's tongue. Oh, uh, yeah. For breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I know. Anyway, yeah, Germany, what a lovely. country. <laughs> it's like just making out with a pig for breakfast. Uh, thanks, Dan. Jill's in Bedford. Hello. Oh, good morning. How you go? Imagine this. You've got around about 150, 200 people sitting there waiting for a fashion show. The commentator yes. is as drunk as a skunk. And then my girlfriend comes up to me. She goes, Jill, Jill, you've got to do this. You can do this. And all my girlfriends go, you can do this. You've just got to get up there and talk about the fashion. And I went, no, no, no. They went, yes, you can. I went, oh, okay. Okay, okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I got up on stage with 150, 200 people and just waffled about fashion and about all these garments coming out and all these models. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I pulled it off. Pulled it off. Uh, well hey, done. Jill. So what did you do? Just talk about the colours? Did you? What did you fall back on? I don't know. I just talked about the colours. And, yeah. Um, oh, aren't the models pretty? <laughs> no, just, literally. Just didn't know what to say. But, I mean, they were beautiful garments, and I just kept saying yes. how glamorous they were, and you'd look great in them, and, and, you know. And I didn't even have my glasses on to read the itinerary or, you know, what they were. So I couldn't see a thing, so I just had to wing it. So That's nice work. I mean, well done. You're a good friend for doing that. But part of me would have wanted to have seen the drunk MC do it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Just for the absolute debacle that it would oh, have been. Well, I've been that MC before. It's not fun. <laughs> oh, you have to. Yeah, I have, you have I, to. I have not been invited back to the Cottesloe Golf Club. It's been three years, four years. That's a true story. Yeah, true story. We can't go into the details because it's <laughs> legal action. Um, thanks, Jill. Georgie's in Malaloo. Hello. Hey, guys. How are you? Great, no, Georgie. Talk. Okay, so what did you say yes to because you were put on the spot? So about six years, seven years ago now, um, I moved to Canada for a couple of years. Um, before I went, my best friend was saying, you know, I'm going to see you the day before you go. I'm just going to say goodbye. Um, so I met up with her and she said, I've got a surprise for us. I booked his matching tattoos. So... <sighs> Seven years later, I've got the worst tattoo on my leg that I absolutely hate, but couldn't say no to. Okay, oh, so what's the tat? Spot. What's the tat of Georgie? Oh, so it's a um, it's a quote that we got, and she got the first sentence, and I got the second, and I cringe oh. every time I have to say it. <laughs> so it doesn't even make sense on its own. So people look and go, look at it, and go, "What does that? What does that even mean?" Yeah, and the worst part of it is. I feel too rude to get it lasered off. What? You've got to. You've got to. It's been killing you for so long, Georgie. Yeah. Get rid are, of you it. are you still friends with this person? Yeah, we're still friends. Hmm. Mm. I mean, you could just wear long socks, I suppose. <laughs> I know. I do. I <laughs> this, friendship's, I mean, this friendship's I had its time out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everybody it's here at the loose. gate bar and bistro says, cut her loose, Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> cut her loose and get it lasered off. <laughs> the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Sean, can we just quickly talk about that football match last night? Oh my God. Yeah, some of our guests here today have already had a chat about but it was what going a match. off last night. You know what the thing, it threw me out now actually because it was on at 20 past 5 last night. Yeah. So I started early. I was actually at Pilates and just for everybody <laughs> out there, um, I got through without dropping my guts. because Oh, that congratulations. Was um, the last time I was there, I let, one, mm. let one slip but mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. time got through, was able to get back to watch the uh, start of the second quarter. From the moment uh, the two teams went out. It was goal for goal. It the was whole time. so tense the whole time. I don't barrack for either of them, but you do find out where your allegiance is like. Because I, I, I realised I was barracking for Brisbane. Me along too. The way. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a lot of our contestants mm. were today as well. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it was intense. You know, Joe Danaher kicked the winning goal for everybody who was watching that last part, and he was honestly the worst on ground up until that start. Yeah, I know. He was There's... costing goals, giving away free kicks. <laughs> I was going mental at the at the TV because I was going, Lockie Neal, obviously, with the connection yes. to Priya, I love him. So I was just screaming at Joe Danaher how bad he was. And then, and then he, he kicks the winning goal. But what what the controversy was the Tom Lynch, the reversal of this, because the ball went over the post. How do they, I mean, from the replay, how do they even judge that? I don't know how they judge that, but I don't know. And the umpire called it a goal. Yeah, I wonder if the the guy who was doing the, um, who's checking for the goals afterwards, the the third umpire, if you like, I wonder if he was swayed by, not necessarily the commentary because he wouldn't have heard that, but certainly the reaction of Tom Lynch, who believed he stuffed it up. Yeah, right. 
Yeah. Interesting. So it? I kind of thought... But, well, the big. commentary was very pro-Richmond, so I wouldn't have think that would... Oh, it was. It was all the time. <laughs> it was incredible. They were just urging Richmond to I know. go forward. Yeah. Um, it, was, uh, it was an incredible game, yeah. I, I, I thought the AFL would be going off with that. Absolute ball terror for so the many first... So goals. And for the first final of this series. It, yep. Yeah, it was a ripper. Yep. And Richmond have had their time in the sun. That's yeah, get them out. Yeah, exactly. Dusty. Yeah. See you later, yes. buddy. See you later. Nathan, Dad and Sean. We are celebrating Dad's ahead of Father's Day. Um, and Sean, your dad has rocked up. How yeah. about that? Yeah, I, um, I just spoke to Dad yesterday, actually, because, um, well, it's just down the road. Mum and yes. Dad are not far over the freeway. They've been out In this the way hood. for ages. We've been out this way to the ages, Dad. So this is your home ground. It sure is. Henry just down McManus. the road from the Mighty Frio Dockers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you doing after this, Dad? You just told me what you're doing after this. Yeah, I'm just going over to the Ark. Um, that's where the doctor's train actually, yes. but I'm just going over there to go to the gym just to... Get in the Speedos and have a swim or what? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, there's a lot of people over there. Actually, Mum and Dad were like founding members over there. So. Is that right? So you get yeah, over yeah. there, it's got everything there. Yeah, you should get over there, Nat. Nah, it's too far from me. Hey? Uh, <laughs> it's full of purple people, I don't like it. Oh, oh really? <laughs> really? <laughs> but... Uh, but, Dad, you, you, you're ready for the game on Saturday. I know we've been talking about the footy uh, a lot since we've been here this morning because a lot of people are gearing up, but you'll be there, you and Mum. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you have a team that hasn't been in the finals for seven years, mm. it's always very, very exciting to, to get up there. Yeah. You, you can't wait to... How are you feeling? Are you feeling nervous? Because I was speaking to a Dockers, a mad Dockers supporter yesterday who was saying she's going tomorrow night, but she said she's fully going in expecting them to lose, like with the, with the worst, assuming the worst outcome, so anything above that is a bonus. Is that where you're at or you're confident? I'm not confident, but I, <laughs> I'm not confident. I don't think anyone can be confident if you mm. have a look at the game last I night. I know, it was a ripper, wasn't Richmond it? Richmond were confident uh, yeah. one minute and one second. Yeah. No, but, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not confident, but I think it'll be a very, very hard game. But uh, you go with the expectation you're going to win. So the expectation is we're going to win. Sure. Uh, but I'm not overconfident. Mm. No. You're, not well, you getting cock- you're not getting cocky about it. Well, you can't be with the Western Bulldogs. If it was the Eagles, yeah. I would be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, the one thing that um, going to the game is that uh, obviously – Mum, mum will be sitting next to dad, and mum gets quite involved in the game. So, is she, she pretty passionate? Ah, oh, she's she, like John Walsfold. A bit, a bit, yeah, she, white line fever. As soon as she crosses the line, she's into it. You don't ever, you wouldn't even recognise this, my wife. That's amazing, isn't what it? Comes out of. Do you sometimes want to like shift yeah. seats? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go to the bar. Um, Henry, now um, football aside, we're celebrating Father's Day, of course. Yeah. Let's talk about what it was like being the father of. These children, the McManus children. Well, I, I think it was the same as a lot of people. You know, very busy. Uh, we've got five children. Yeah. So, uh, and they all played sport. Yes. So that we did a lot of sport down. And four at, boys and a girl too. Four boys which and is a girl. Yeah. Horrendous. Thank goodness for the one girl. <laughs> <laughs> not four. I don't know. I reckon she might have been more trouble than the boys. To That's be what I mean. <laughs> one girl and not four. Okay, right. No, she's lovely. <laughs> and, uh, and um, but we spent a lot of time down in Wilson Sports Club. My yep. wife was a manager down there for years and years doing all the... Uh, mm. uh, what did you do? Uh, me, bugger all. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she became a life member. Yeah. So she was the first woman to become oh, a life that's member of Wil- Wilton Sports Club. Yeah. So if, that's our claim to fame, really, is that my wife's a <laughs> yes. life member down in Are you a life? Did they make you a life member no, out of pity? Didn't. No, no. <laughs> No, but everyone... <laughs> Just the arm candy. Yeah. Every, everyone knew me down there. Yeah, yeah no, I, I bet they did. bits and pieces, but not enough of... Yeah, you, you just put money over the bar. So, really, <laughs> to bring up uh, five five children, it's exactly the same as what it is today. It's uh, never-ending. You've got to, you're spending, you're running everywhere to do, <laughs> do things. That's true. And, and then you've got to make sure that everyone's fed, you know, at yes. night. And people think that's easy, but it's it's not. And I understand what... 
they go through. It's yeah. very, very difficult, in particular when you've got five. But we didn't notice after a while everything just flows and you just know you've got your arguments in the family with the kids. Yes, all, always. Always, especially with four boys and a girl. And uh, But as it turned out, they're all growing up and one's standing right next to me. I know, none of them are in prison. You've done an amazing job. Yeah. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's only terrible. because he hasn't been caught yet. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. Well, Dad, we're going to get you to stick around a bit later on. We might put you to work. I haven't seen you play darts for a long time, but you can play pool. You I play reckon you'd be all right at so darts. He's a left-hander. I reckon he could be sneaky. What do you reckon? You got any form? I'll, I'll have a, I'll have a go, but I haven't, mm. haven't. Uh, you know, when you don't play something for a long time, yeah, it takes you a few games to get into it. I wouldn't have a few games to get into it. No, no, no you're just no, going to have to go in blind. A good advantage. Yeah, <laughs> right. You're listening to Nathan, Nat, and Sean. We're seconds away from catching up with Simon Garlic, CEO of the Freeman or Dockers. Before we do that, we've got Jeremy McGovern still with us. And Gov, I was going to ask you, uh, Father's Day, what's the plans for this weekend? Yeah, uh, it is Yeah, it is Father's Day. Um, oh, plans for me, I'm, I'm actually flying up to Carrather at 12 o'clock today, taking so, my old man up there to go fishing. Oh, so you've prioritised your own father over your children? Yeah, I've sacrificed my <laughs> Father's Day for my dad's <laughs> Father's Day, so... Um, and to, go, and to go fishing, of course. My, ki- sure? my kids are still young, so... So what you're saying is you're going fishing and you're letting your dad come with you? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. That's exactly how, <laughs> how it works. And, uh, Perfect. <laughs> yeah, it should, should be a good weekend with the old boy. Oh, no doubt about it. Both of you are passionate passionate about fishing or you are I know yeah that. yeah no dad is for sure we haven't we haven't been and dad hasn't been fishing for a while so um we thought we'd get up there and, and sneak away nice well it'll be a great gift for Fremantle Dockers supporters if the Dockers get up for Father's yeah, Day that's, that's the true. dad's out there we're joined by the CEO of the Fremantle Dockers Simon Garley how are you Garlo good Shawnee how are you mate Really good. We have got the uh, our West Coast Eagles superstar Jeremy <laughs> McGovern in here. He's not sure if he's got a question for you, if, but if I thought you need I'd some finals tips, he's here for you. <laughs> no, I've got, I've got no finals tips, man. I'm all, all the best with it. Um, I'm, I'm stoked, stoked for Longy um, and JJ's down there as well. So, hope you boys can steal a win. Thank you, mate. I know um, the boys obviously worked for a fair while with you guys and got great relationships there. So, uh, appreciate that, mate. Looking forward to a, a big Saturday night. I now, thought- oh, I was just going to say something. As a as a bulldogs man, through and through, is your loyalty divided? How do you how do you reconcile being the CEO of the Dockers against your old team? It's funny. I've been asked that question a bit this week, Matt. But it's, yes, there's no no um, divide divided loyalty whatsoever. It's all bulldogs all the way. Purple eh? now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been saying I spent a long time at the dogs, fifteen years of my life, all yeah. up in varying roles, and love the club. It's fantastic for me. But you know, when you're involved in a footy club, particularly in a senior position, it's sort of all in, all or nothing. And you know, we've moved our three kids, Lou and my wife and I moved our three kids coming up three years ago now, and we love Perth uh, and love the footy club more particularly. Shawnee would tell you on a daily basis, it's a pretty special place, and um, no, nah, it's all purple at our household and through the veins as well. Yeah, good on you, Garlo. One of the things I was just talking about with Gov, um, is the city's blown up in the last, yes. well, it's been a, it's a, you know, been two weeks I mean, leading into the final, so there's a lot of noise. And even before that, the flag mantle um, sort of wheel started turning pretty early on in the season. It's gained a fair bit of momentum now. But that just adds pressure, right? Bloody flag, flag mantle. Uh, I know, right? I'm hearing about this. Um, I know. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's actually great. It, it's, it's funny. I mean, we've obviously been starved of, of finals appearances for the last seven years, so we're, we've got an unbelievable fan base. It's, it's particularly resilient and and committed and passionate uh, and I actually love all of that component of it because they're pretty creative in the way that they like to, to follow um, the club as well too so it's just it's great it's my first experience in Perth um, with the club from a finals point of view you see the passion of a two team town and an Aussie rules dominated town coming through so it's incredibly exciting and I think everyone at the club is enthusiastic even we haven't been there for a bit Simon, has anything surprised you about when you first joined the Dockers? I mean, I, I, I'd imagine, this is my own opinion from the East Coast, you think that, um, you know, over in the West, there, there could be a small type of club, but I've always felt that, you know, obviously being a two-team town, both West Coast and Fremantle can have enormous amount of power with the numbers of people who follow those two teams. Yeah, it was, it's really interesting from my background, Johnny, having um, you know, ran the Dogs for five years. Uh, you come to Perth, and I think... Even people internally at the club kind of had that feeling that we were a small club based on the fact, and that's really driven by the fact that the Eagles 
are a bit of an anomaly. They're a bit of an outlier because they're so big and, and they're a huge club, you know, even on a I don't mean international scene just in terms of how big they've been. They had a different entry into the comp than we did, as you know, Shawnee, and had success pretty quickly. And they've done a really good job as a club to be as successful as they are. But in relative terms, I come to to Frio, we've had 50,000 members each, over 50,000 members each of the last six years and we haven't played finals. Um, we've got no debt, we've got you know cash in the bank, we've got an unbelievable stadium and I look at those measures compared to when I first got to the Bulldogs and it's a completely different story. So I think there's a, it, it, the way you look at it, it's a bit different and we've got everything we need to be a successful club. We, we, we've, got a, we've got a real focus over the next five years in particular with some pretty significant aspiration lanes. We've got Great people here. There's been a lot of change over the last two to three years. Um, but there's nothing holding us back. And that's the thing I've noticed more than anything, mate. I think that's we're really opening up our eyes to the potential of, of our footy club. One thing, though, that you did um, only at the start of this year, Gov, I'm not sure if you got a, um, a view on this, is um, led by Simon... They put some things out there into the public domain, which is we want to win a few flags in the next couple of years, be in the finals, get all yeah, the Yeah, no one had thought of that before. Well, well, no, the thing is, when you, when you make statements like this, yes. everyone's looking to chop you down, as you would know, so... Yeah, yeah, oh, bloody oath, but um, well, that's what you're there for, really, at the end of the day, and, and like Simon said, they've, they've set the club up, um, they, can, they can see it and visualise it, and um, yeah, for them... Yeah, their intention. Yeah. And, and you want to, that's, your fans want to hear that, you, they, they want to hear that you're striving to win flags. So that's what we are here for, and um, everything's set up for them. And, and they've got an opportunity this year. So, um, was, was that yeah. a conscious decision, Simon, to, to to get out there and be public about what your intent was? Um, yeah, it was, Matt. It was absolutely the case. I think, yeah, it's, um, Shawnee sort of alluded to it. We're an industry. It's funny in the whole scheme of things. You know, we'll turn over something in the order of six to five million bucks this year. We're we're a small to medium business when you compare us to you know the big mining companies and the banks yeah. and the like. But what we do have is a huge amount of scrutiny and focus, and you guys know this mm. as much as anyone, particularly in a town like this. So you, you, you put your head up too often, or if you say the wrong thing, or you make a mistake, <laughs> it gets pretty pretty widely covered and amplified. So I think it's really easy as a footy club to keep your aims and aspirations to yourself. But we, we thought, no, no, you know, we run our club on behalf of the members and fans of Freo. Um, we've got a plan and this is what we want to achieve, they should know about it and they should be brought on the journey yeah. with us. And, and as Shawnee said, that provides risk because, um, you know, if you don't achieve that, then you can easily, people will pull out interviews from a few years ago and say that you were <laughs> going to do this and you haven't done that. <laughs> I, I kind of figure it's only the CEO who's going to get the chop based on it. Yeah, so yeah that's right. That's right. Okay. Oh, but I mean, come but with you over the hill, mate. There's a, no as doubt. a fan, <laughs> Simon, I just always assumed that was the intent that it was implied that if you're playing AFL football, yeah. the, the the implication is, yeah, you're trying to win a premiership. Yeah, we got quite detailed on it. So the premiership is the ultimate aim, but we talked a yeah. lot about what we want to do in the community, how we want to yeah. approach our partnerships, what we want to do from a financial perspective. So we, we sort of laid that all out there because we see ourselves as a public company. And, sure. and I, I, I actually like the thought of putting yourself on the hook for it rather than just keeping it quietly to yourselves because it... It means you're going to go after it pretty hard if you've made it public. Yeah, yeah nice. Well, it's yeah. working so far. Well, last, the last CEO to come out and say that was Richmond, I reckon. And they, uh, yeah, and, they, and it yeah, worked. Pretty, and it worked pretty well for them. So uh, hopefully, hopefully it works out for you guys as well. Fantastic, absolutely. Yeah, it, it was, it, it, there's a way to play it safe, I think, and then there's a way to put yourself out there. And we much prefer to do that. If you don't achieve it, then so be it. You, you get on with it and keep going yeah. again. But we'd much prefer to, to put ourselves on the hook. Carlo, we really appreciate your time. We know it's been a big week. You've got lots of interviews and stuff happening around the football club. Look forward to spending the Good night with you tomorrow, tomorrow, actually, mate. It's going to be great. Good on you, Sean. Thanks for having me on, guys. Much appreciate it. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Well, just in case you've been living under a rock, there is a massive game in town tomorrow night. The West Oh, why? What's happening? <laughs> They're trying to take on the mighty Fremantle Dockers at Optus Stadium. Griffin Logue, our Docker, is going to be playing there. He's back from injury, Nat. Raring to go. G'day, Griff. Yeah, guys, how are you going? You're jumping out of your skin yet, Griff, or what? Oh, yeah, no, it's pretty, um, yeah, it's pretty surreal still. I think I won't really realise it until we're out on the, on the park and in front of 50-odd thousand, so it's, um, no, it's getting really exciting. Oh, the one thing you'll get you, Griff, no doubt, will be when you stand there before the game and the National Anthem's played. It's really spine-tingling yeah. stuff. Yeah. No, I can't, I can't wait, so, um, yeah, just honestly jumping out of your skin just to get out there, so. 
I read um, a stat yesterday that said that um, Geelong's emergencies have more finals experience than the Dockers' entire team. <laughs> It's not bad. It's good, isn't it? No, no, it's quite, quite staggering, isn't it? <laughs> but, you know, you're coming out fresh like, and keen. <laughs> yeah, I, tell you what, I think Joel Selwood, as a, as a captain himself, has had oh, like 13 or 14 finals campaigns total. So, like, this is just our first finals single game. So, um, yeah, it's obviously we got a bit to learn. But, um, nah, I mean, we're very, we're very excited. And it's, a, uh, it's an awesome opportunity. Yeah, it is. Absolutely, Griff. And um, that was a very short answer. Thank you. Um, hey, we've come down the He's road. He's saving his energy. Leave him alone. Clearly. Hey, hey Griff, we've, we've come down to Coburn. We're literally up the road from yep. your training base here. We're at the, uh, um, up, the up, up the road at the Bar and Grill waiting for you to, to lob on in, but you're going somewhere else. Nah, yeah, I would have. Uh, I would have otherwise for a nice, uh, nice army at 8 a.m. in the morning, but I, uh, <laughs> I've just on the way to training at Optus. We do our captain's uh, captain on office today just to check, check out the pitch, make sure she's all ready to rock and roll. Yeah, hunky dory. Oh, hunky dory. So, so, are we forward line or back line this week? What do you reckon? Forward, I hope. I think that's mm. the plan. Okay. Kick a few Good. snacks, probably, probably what I'd like to do. Yeah. Well, we'd set like to see that too. Oh, set them up. Yeah, you like to give <laughs> off a handball in the goal square, yeah, don't you? It's very generous. Uh, I get a lot more joy and pride out of giving them off than I do kicking them myself, if I'm honest, but. Um, uh, you know, we can't all be like Shawnee and just go back and, and kick him and be, be a bit selfish. I mean, yeah, yeah. he had to kick be him out of bounds. knocked out to kick him straight. <laughs> that was the key, actually. That was a good one. That, that. Um, Griff, the interesting, th- yeah, the interesting thing about this game, obviously you beat the Western Bulldogs just recently in the last yep. month, but you would have thought they would have learnt a lot. Can, can you learn as much as what I perceive that they would have learned from losing to you. Can you learn as much by beating them about what you're going to bring on Saturday night? Um, yeah, fair point. I reckon you probably do learn a bit more when you've lost just because uh, there's more to come out of it. But in saying that, I think we still learned a plenty and um, we're nowhere near perfect when we played them. And I don't think we've, anyone's ever really played a perfect game, so it's a bit cliche. But um, no, I, I think that we will learn a bit and what we've done to kind of look at stopping uh, where they kind of put us unstuck last time, where they were able to kind of shoot through the middle and um, especially from the back half kind of go direct to goal. So that's something that we'll be looking to kind of slow them down a bit. And um, But above all, just sticking to our kind of system and, and putting it in the hands of our good players and letting Dave Mundy laser a few blokes into, into the forward 50 be nice, I reckon, as well. Yeah, for sure. Now, what are the plans, the prep? So what do you eat tonight? Is it just raw meat or do you carb load? That's what right. do you do? Poking with sticks and feeding raw meat. <laughs> yeah, raw, raw meat. Raw meat hasn't really uh, been on the menu just yet, but I'll tell you what, I'll give it, I'll give it a crack next time. Um, no, nah, it's just pretty, pretty well normal for me. Um, I don't really change up too much, um, especially if it's a different game or anything like that. So. Not too fast what I eat, as long as I get a little bit of pasta in the night before. Pasta, lasagna, anything carby. No pizza. Yeah. I don't like pizza. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, I'll just kind of relax and stretch out tonight and uh, have a big sleep in tomorrow. And then we will be trying to just fill, fill the time in tomorrow because it's a fair wait till a 6 o'clock game and um, maybe have another nap if I'm feeling a little bit sleepy. But if not, then it's um, just, yeah, rest and get ready to... How many coffees? Um, I'm not too fast, really. Probably two or three still. Mm. Do you have one before the game, Griff? Uh, depending on the, the time of the game, but yeah, yeah, mostly. Like right, right before I just jump in the car. If we've got a home game, I'll jump in the car and get one on the way. I remember when I was when, when I was playing, Dale kick it always before a game. You'd be walking around the change rooms. You're trying to be in the zone. He's just having a coffee with our uh, property manager, Paddy Watson. Just having a coffee, chewing the fat. It was very relaxing. It made me relax. Yeah, Barra, yeah it's a good way to be. Barra's like that, but he just goes and gets one of those instant ones from the um, from the change rooms. He never he never pays for one. Oh, so he's just using like you know your your powdered instant coffee. Oh, I like. I think there's espresso machines and stuff lying around. Often right, in a okay. Few, a few hidden rooms that he's kind of set up for himself. Little tea room or coffee room. So yeah, he but he's got to think of the, 
He's got to think of the future. His employment could be finishing very shortly. Well, this is true. Well, I was going to say it's worked for him. <laughs> this is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Oh, we're lucky to be joined by Jeremy McGovern, West Coast Eagles superstar. Now, he's coming to em- enemy territory down yes. this way. But, you, you know, your family were south of the river there for quite some time. Yeah, yeah, we were. We were down in Port Kennedy for a little bit there, and then I uh, seen the light went north, so... <laughs> Sorry to run down here. <laughs> hey, uh, Gov, we're actually just talking about the game itself last night, you know, finals footy. Yeah. What did you make of it? Oh, it's a hell of a start, the final series, that's for sure. That was um, an absolute cracking game. Uh, I don't normally watch too much footy, but um, I got stuck on stuck on watching that last night, and it's, uh, it's a good start. Um, Who did you the find rest of yourself like barracking for? I was going for Richmond. I, I called Richmond. I thought Richmond was going to sneak through the whole way, but um, obviously they're out straight away. But uh, <laughs> if they're going to go out, that's that's one way you want yeah. to go out, I guess. Uh, they left everything out there, and it was um absolute cracker. You know, the one thing that I think everyone was watching um, how good the game was is because it was high scoring, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, tight games and low scoring could be like that way, but high scoring. When you're playing in the back line and it's just... <laughs> It's going through all the time, yeah. e- each way. How, how's that going? Oh, it sucks. It sucks. <laughs> it's the last thing you want as a backman uh, is a high-scoring, free-flowing game. But um, <laughs> I messaged Simo and I said, mate, surely this game's going to slow down at some stage because normally the game will settle and, and, and it turns into a finals game, a bit more contested. And uh, But that, that game stayed open all night. Um, and when it's like that, normally Richmond thrive in those conditions. So um, it was a credit to Brisbane to take the win out. Yeah. I was actually saying to Nat before, the other thing that you would have noticed about the game is the umpiring, um, they let things go. There was some loose, unbelievable yeah. tackles. There was, I mean, a couple of dangerous ones got paid, but there was unbelievable tackling. The umpires came in really quick to, to, to ball the ball up. Um, if you're going for a mark, you really had to, you had to mark it full stop all the way to the ground. Otherwise, it's, you get cannon into. No worries. So it really changes. Yeah, it does. I, I, the umpiring was really good. Everyone pays the umpires out. I think they've done a pretty good job this year. And, uh, you've seen it last night. It was great. It was great spectacle. So one wants to be looked after next year. <laughs> yeah, of course. I absolutely love the umpires. Uh, yeah, they look after me as much as they want. But um, no, it was a cracker. Yeah, it was the, the whole aspect of it was was perfect. I think the AFL will be pretty happy with that one. Okay, what about the score review system and the Tom Lynch non goal yeah. What do you think about that? Oh, as a I, backman, you I, loved it. <laughs> yeah, as a backman, it was definitely a point. Um, but um, no, yeah, it, it's very hard. I think we've got all the technology yeah. we've got at hand at the moment. Um, Unfortunately, that's probably decided the game, so you hope yeah. that the decision was right. But um, from the naked eye, it looked like it went over the post. But the umpire said it was a goal, so who, who knows? Yeah. But um, I'm Should sure be... they'll review it and do whatever they can. It is a tough call overruling it. If the umpire yes. calls yeah, in decision that's right. or, or a point, Because there has to be evidence, yeah. uh, uh, clear evidence to overrule something. Yeah, yeah. most definitely. Yeah, well, Tom Lynch's reaction His wasn't reaction, the greatest. Yeah. The fans' reaction wasn't the greatest, but who knows? Yeah. We'll, we'll find out. I'm oh, sure in the next couple of days. Record books now. Hey, Gov, I gave you some, uh, the jerky po- co boys are here. I gave you some of this red hot pepper one. It's not yeah, bad, it's, is it? It's bloody beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Wait, no, you hate I'm mean, a chili man, so I, I love that. That's, um, that's, that's a cracker. That's right nothing. There. You didn't even feel it. Uh, yeah, I felt a, it a, a bit, but no, warming. it's nice. I, I, I like, I normally, everyone says, or my missus always says, is it hot? And I go, no, it's not too bad. And she has it, she starts <laughs> coughing, so. Um, but no, it's beautiful. Absolutely John beautiful. started sculling iced water pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's a great way to start the day. Yeah, yeah, it gets you up and about, that's for sure. Swipe and hot. Uh, jerky coat, beautiful. Yeah, oh, well done, there you go. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Now, you ever been in a situation where you thought something was free, so you make the most of it, like you go overboard? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it happened to um, my missus just a couple of days ago. And one of my sons was in hospital. He had an operation just the yes. other day. And he was in hospital for a few days. So my missus stayed over. Um, and when the food menu comes out, you get to order what you want. Particularly if you're the person in hospital, yes. you get everything. Ice creams, desserts, everything's happening. And you get a good array of food. Oh, when you're the patient. So, so you're the patient. this was, a, it wasn't the Perth Children's Hospital. It was the, not a public hospital. It was a private. Yeah, yeah. Fancy private hospital. Uh uh, yeah, yeah. needs a bit of a dressing up. But anyway, it was a, <laughs> night, it was a private hospital. So, yeah, okay, right. So my son was in there. My wife decided to stay over and do the right thing, and she was yeah. the one who held up her end. She's by a very attentive there. mother, yes. And she was looking at the menu, as we all were, when we were having a look at it, and it was pretty impressive. Like, there yeah, were right. so many good things on it. So she, believing that everything was free, was going to town. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So for dinner, for example, actually for lunch, when I went in there the other day to see her, she was ordering a rack of lamb. That was for lunch. <laughs> And then for dinner, there was like a fillet. 
Are you supposed to get a sandwich for lunch? <laughs> just having a rack of lamb. For breakfast, you know, scrambled eggs and whatnot, yes. and then you get all the fruits and that that come along yes. with it. In fact, when I went there, um, I was going there three times a day, but when I went there at night, um, the other night, I turned up and she'd, order, she'd made sure that I had a bowl of soup and that Sonny, my daughter, had a... Um, oh, she's ordering food for the whole oh, family. Everyone, everyone. And then it was got to a point where I said, you're going a bit out of control. You know, this is not free. <laughs> And she nearly fell over. It's included for the patient, not for the 15 family members (laughs) that come in to join you. They thought everything was free, so she's going absolutely wild on the menu at the hospital. So uh, health insurance didn't cover that? No, I'm not sure. I haven't seen the invoice yet, but uh, (laughs) I don't know. It's coming. I would suggest you don't look at it. (laughs) The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Jerky go hand in hand, and it's time to spoil your dad this Father's Day. See the Biltong Specialists at your local Jerky Co store or head to jerkyco.com.au. We've been playing darts this morning at the Gate Bar and Bistro. Uh, we whittled the field down from eight till the final two, who are going to be throwing three darts each for the chance to win. $5,000 from the Jerky Co. Yeah, it's Ian up against Troy. And, uh, Gov, we, we chatted to the boys just a second ago to mm. see if, uh, if they wanted a warm-up. No, nah, they're going cold turkey straight yeah. in there. And uh, <laughs> that's the confidence the two have. So um, all the best with it, boys. And, Ian, is it true that you've never played darts? Dead right. Never played darts. Never played darts. Made it to the final. <laughs> I mean, that's extraordinary, isn't it? It is. Yeah. All right, well, you're up first. So you've got three darts. It is the highest score wins. The crowd right. is silenced. Whenever you're ready, Ian. Let's throw that Whenever first dart, Ian. That is a 13. That is another 13. Is 26. And that is an 8. 26 plus 8 is 34. 34. Well done, Sean. Ian Thank is you. on the board with a score right, of 34. You've got to count this next No, time. no, it's all I'm yours, mate. <laughs> you, were, you were doing such a good job. I'm going to sit back here and uh, so, commentate from the bleachers. Troy, you're up. For $5,000, the score to beat is 34. Hang on. <laughs> Left hand. First dart. And he's on the board. That's a 12. <gasps> that is a double five. So we are at 22. Just hold on. 22. Okay, what does he 22. need to win? 22. He needs, uh, what's that? 13 to win. And that's oh, it. Well done. Well done. He's well done. done it. Troy, well he's done, done it. Troy takes out the five thousand dollars from the jerky coat. Oh, go get over and eat oh, well the great well day. Oh, mate. Happy Father's well done, Day, mate. Troy. Congratulations. How do you feel? Stoked, mate. Yeah, nervous ass. <laughs> yeah, well, the, cel- the celebration at the end there was was pretty big for five people in the crowd here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done. You finished on my number twenty as well, so I'm um, even better, mate. Congratulations. You just won five thousand. Thank you very much. That's what I was going for, number twenty, the whole time. Happy uh, Father's Day, number. Troy. Well done. Um, wow. Outstanding, Ian. Congratulations being the final. Never played before. I tell you what, Ian, we're going to give you a carton of beer because it's just a polite thing to do from the Gate Bar and Bistro. A carton of Dockers beer. Sorry about that. Yeah, you're going to love that, Ian. <laughs> Absolutely love that. And Third no. prize is two cartons. Yeah. <laughs> $5,000. Thanks to the boys from the Jerky Cove for coming along. Yeah, Lord brilliant Chris work. And Jake are here as well, so and, we really appreciate that. And everybody well. at the Gate Bar and Bistro have looked after us so well this morning. Love it. This is Nathan, Nat and Sean. It's tough being a Dockers supporter, isn't it, Sean? Well, it is. Seven years since we've been in the finals, actually, Nat. And um, mm. that, at that stage, we were looking like the last time was going to be in the grand final. Everyone believed it, but we went out in straight sets. Yeah. Not great. Right, one, not one, great. One of our team members is a mad Dockers fan. Well, some would say all Dockers fans are mad, but she is particularly, <laughs> particularly passionate, I think is the word we're looking for. Claire, Hello. welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Now, Claire. It's a big thing that the Dockers are in uh, an elimination final tomorrow night. It's absolutely terrifying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is. But you, but you had plans you weren't going to go. So a long time ago, my girlfriends and I booked a crown weekend. Everything's sort of prepaid for. Yes. Including uh, tomorrow we've paid for the Crystal Club. For the oh, club. oh, yes. So, Look at you, yeah, fancy. We put this in. Yeah, we're obviously frozen to all those sorts of things. So it was a beautiful, oh, beautiful weekend. Magnificent planned. girls' weekends planned. Exactly. And I am a Dockers member, so upon seeing the time 
yes. of the final, I made the decision to, uh, I wouldn't be attending the final. But you would forego your uh, opportunity to buy tickets. Do you know what? I'm, I'm pretty nervous about the game, so I was like, you know, mm. I'll, I'll keep an eye on it and I'll pop down to the sports bar. Yeah. If I, uh, depending yeah. on the outcome, you know, sure. everything's fine. I made that decision. Yeah. And then, what, then what's happened this morning? Someone sent me a message and offered me some tickets, and I think I'm going to go. <laughs> you're not, you think you've already made the decision you're going. You're not thinking you're going to go. Yeah, you've said, said yes. I already said yes. <laughs> so you, you've ditched the girlfriends. Sorry. You're going to let. I mean, it is right there. You're right there. One of them could come with me if they wanted. <laughs> oh, so then how are you going to choose? <laughs> It's working for us. See, the thing is, if you were at the Crystal Club, and because the balcony's open, right, you'd be out there having a, a thousand champagnes. Your cocktails galore. But you'd be able to hear the noise, and it would get, yes. it would get on your nerves, I, I reckon. I think so, yeah. I think... I'm just concerned that this decision will affect the outcome of the game now. You know, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, well, 100%. I do. That's, that is how Dockers games are determined, so, is by whether or not you've attended. I feel like you could blame me if everything goes mm. wrong. Which it won't. Well, well, everything will be fine. Tell Justin a bit later on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell him not to worry bit. about making any moves, because <laughs> the result is predetermined, <laughs> predetermined by the fact that Claire has accepted some free tickets oh. to the demise of a relationship with her girlfriends. Oh, yeah, well, they're, they're sisters-in-law, so it's fair. Oh, they're, oh they're, stuck, they're stuck with you. Yeah, I can't disown you. Bad luck. <laughs> All right, there's a note. Don't become friends with Claire. Better off to come off. You're out the door. back on you very, very quickly. All right, enjoy the game. We're playing Thank the song you. for you. There you go. So Let's hope you hear it tomorrow night, Claire. Seems you've ditched your girlfriends for this. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.